endure it forever. Yes, God. Come on, get excited. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. People from every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From generation. From generation to generation. Yes. We worship you. and fulfill the law of Christ. Amen? Amen. If you don't have a need, continue to worship with us this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus. Somebody adore the Lord in this place. Lift your hands in worship. He's worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we surrender to you, Lord. You're worthy of our praise, God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Jesus. Your holy name, 
Show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory, Lord. 
beautiful family. Hey, good morning, man. Yeah. Second service, you guys are just like ready. <laughs> Listen, it's awesome to see you all today. And uh, thank you to those who jump online with us every week. And today we're starting a brand new series called OMG. And so for those of you who text, those of you who are on social media, you know what OMG, OMG is short for Oh My God. Now let me tell you, 
Let me tell you, I I think, uh, no, I think. I've shared with you all many times that I am one of five boys. So my poor mom and dad, right? Like five boys. I have two older brothers, two younger brothers, and they lovingly refer to me as the mouth in the middle. Like, it's loving, I promise. And so can you imagine five boys, especially on summer break at home, you guys, five boys like being boys. How many times a day you heard, oh my God, and my mom or my dad, hey, we don't take the Lord's name in vain that way. Well, the title of this series is certainly not taking the the Lord's name in vain. You guys, it is about Our Bible that is filled with story after story, moment after moment, where when you read it and you understand what's going on, you can't help but say, oh my God. And so over the next few weeks, you guys, we're going to have several of those moments where it's like, what? God did what? What? How did that happen? And so today is one of those instances in the Old Testament, you guys, where it's just like, man, for some of you, maybe you've heard this story from the time you were little. For others, this might be something new for you. It is honest and truly one of those stories in the Bible where it's like, oh my God, look what God is doing. Look what God did. And so let me set up a little bit of context for you, okay? And so this happens to be one of the times in the Bible where an evil king conquered God's people. So arguably one of the most narcissistic kings in the Bible, King Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king of Babylon. And this is historical data, you guys. Like no one, no one debates, like even people who debate whether the Bible is real or Jesus is real, like no one debates. It's in history. There was a King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And so he attacked God's people in Jerusalem and completely besieged it and took thousands and thousands of Israelites into captivity in Babylon. And as we've talked to you guys over the years, several times I've pointed out to you these evil kings, these evil empires, some of their specialties. And so let me tell you, for the Babylonian empire, one of their specialties was this, Paul. They were very good at brainwashing their captives. They were very good at getting these people, whoever their enemies were, once they took them into captivity, they were experts at getting them to forget their identity, getting them to forget who they were, and getting them to become completely acculturated in Babylonian society. And so their idea was, whoever we take captive... We want you to just shut up and blend in. Just be a part of the crowd. Go with the flow. Don't make any waves. Sounds familiar, right? Just shut up, you Christians. You people who believe in God. Just shut up with your hate speech. Just shut up and blend in. And so their campaign to brainwash their enemies, was so thorough, you guys. Let me tell you what they did. After they captured God's people, this narcissistic king, and you know narcissism is, who's your God when you're a narcissist? You, me, 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 it's all about me. And so this narcissistic king said, I want you to get the best of the best of the Jews. I mean, I want them to be the best looking, the brightest and the smartest, the most skilled, the people who are like the celebrities among the Jews. You know, like, I want you to go get the Kardashians. I want, depends, I guess it depends on what you think about the Kardashians, right? Um, But I want you to go, and you know, you guys, in our culture today, right, when there's something new, some kind of product or some new idea, what do we have? We have celebrity endorsements, right? Well, so if, if you see it on TikTok or Facebook or, you know, it's like, get the good looking, smart, popular people to endorse it. And the idea is then everybody else will just fall in line and follow the popular people. 
And so he said, go do this. Get me the best of the best so we can brainwash them. And when we jump into Daniel, you guys, Daniel, an Old Testament book, Daniel chapter one, starting with verse six, we see that among these were Daniel, a guy named Hananiah, another one named Mishael, and a fourth, Azariah of the tribe of Judah. The chief of the eunuchs. So this was the dude who Nebuchadnezzar put in charge and said, go get me the best of the best. The chief, as a part of the campaign to get them to forget who they were, said, we're going to change your names. We're going to give you brand new names as a part of our campaign to brainwash you. And so Daniel, they called Belteshazzar, Hananiah, he called Shadrach, Mishael, he called Meshach, and Azariah, he called Abednego. Uh, remember, you guys, this was all a part of the plan. You will fit in to our culture. You will forget the God that you worship. Everybody will do exactly what I tell you to do. You will eat what I tell you to eat. You will drink what I tell you to drink. And you will worship precisely when, what, and how I tell you to. And just as a sidebar, you guys, you know, anytime the government gets involved in how we worship, it's a dun, 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 right? Never turns out right. And so... This dude goes, hey, the king has given me instructions on exactly what you guys will eat and exactly what you guys will drink. And, what, and Daniel said, no, our God has instructed us that we eat as Jewish people. We eat kosher. We eat a certain way. And we will not eat from the king's table. We will, we will not eat the finest meats and cheeses and the finest wines. And we will not do that. And so this chief is just like, no, dude, you have to do that. Because at some point, I'm going to present you to the king. And if he sees the celebrities looking all emaciated and all, like, then I get in trouble. And Daniel's like, no, 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 trust me. Trust me. You just give us vegetables and water. Test us for 10 days. Give us vegetables and water. Let everybody else eat the finest meats, the finest cheeses, the best wine. And test us out. Test us in this. So in verse 15, you guys, we read, at the end of the 10 days, it was seen that they, these four guys, were in better appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. Now, you guys know when you decide that for a while you're going to eat just fruits and vegetables and water, that's called a diet, right? Like, you don't want to get fatter. So it's important that you recognize this is an OMG moment. So here these guys are just eating vegetables and just drinking water, and their appearance was better than the people who ate from the king's table. We read in verse 17. Let's skip to 17. As for these four youths, God gave them. God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in visions and dreams. And at the end of the time, we're going to skip to verse 20. Uh, the king said, all right, bring them in. Let me see what's happening with these guys. Bring the celebrities in. Let's see what's happening. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, family, what do we read? He found them what? Ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in all of his kingdom. There's an OMG moment here, family, when you decide, and the lesson for us is when you decide that you're not going to cave in, when you decide that you're not going to compromise and just go with the flow and not try to fit in with what everybody else is doing, you personally and properly put yourself in a position where God can show up and do the miraculous in your life, family. There, it, it pays. It pays to obey the Lord. Amen, fam. Amen. It pay, and so they didn't go with the crowd. It wasn't their thing to just 
blend in, be camouflaged in the culture. They decided we're going to do it God's way. And so that's the first OMG moment in this, in this section. But family, the next one to come is OMG. This narcissistic king continues on. He sees, hey, all is well, all is great. And because he's such a narcissist, he decided, you know what? I'm going to build this 90-foot golden idol. 90 feet tall. Huge. Wow. And when beautiful music plays, everybody in the kingdom has to bow down and worship this idol. Do you see it, family? This narciss He's a narcissist, and it's like, I just want to be in control of everything and everyone. And so he had this golden idol built. And whenever the beautiful music would play, everybody in the kingdom would bow. Except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. At this time, Daniel was serving in the king's court, so he wasn't a part of this story, I'm, I'm telling. But Daniel wouldn't have bowed either. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided, we're not going to worship this false idol. We're not going to bow. And so some of the other government officials, you guys, who it was their job to inspect when the music plays, you go out there and make sure everybody bows. They came back to the king and they're like, hey, king, we got good news and we got bad news. What do you want first, the good or the bad? The bad news is, is that these three boys that are some of the cream of the crop, the celebrity bunch, they have refused to bow. And the king said, okay, okay. Heat up the furnace and put out the decree that when the music plays, if you don't shut up and just blend in and bow down like everybody else, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. And I grew up in a house, you guys. My mom and dad bought this old Victorian house and, re and remodeled it, you know, kind of thing. But in the basement, it had this big old coal furnace. Wave your hand at me if you know what I'm talking about, coal furnaces. Yeah, you had to put coal and wood in it. It was terrible. You guys, it was a beautiful house, but it was, it was terrible. And so us boys would have to go down every so often in the winter throughout the, and shovel in coal and put in wood to keep the fire going to warm the house. I don't want you to think that kind of furnace, okay? This furnace would have been this enormous pit where they would have been able to get it so hot that they could have melted down precious metals and things for their use. And it was constructed in such a way that at a certain vantage point, you would be able to see what was happening on the inside, okay? And so the king has made this decree. When the beautiful music plays, everyone will bow to my image. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, no, we will not bow to this false God. And so where we jump back in the story, fam, is the other government officials have reported to the king. And now Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are standing in front of the king, and he is enraged. What's going on? What's going on? Look, you look great. Everything that you could ever want has been provided for you. All I'm asking you to do is just fit in. Shut up and blend in with the crowd. The brainwashing. So here they are. What do you imagine their response is? Verse 16 in chapter 3 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. You have to remember, you guys, so the, the, this fattening up, I've eaten only vegetables, and they, they're seeing God is up to something, okay? So they're, this is about 18 to 20 years later. And so they're kind of emboldened because they've seen God doing something in their lives. And so they're standing before the king, and they're like, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. And I want you to see it not as this, you guys. 
Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. But I want you to see these three boys kind of like this. Yo, Nebby. What's up, Nebby? What's up? Yeah, yeah. Listen to what they said. Yeah, Nebby. We have no need to answer you in this matter. Instantly, they could have been killed. Right there, you guys. They could have been killed instantly. Can you see these three? Yeah, Nebby. No, no, we're, we're not going to answer you in this matter. If this be so, you want to throw us into a fiery furnace? Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery yeah. furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But you got, but if not, yeah. be it known to you, Nebi, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. The narcissist, what do narcissists hate most? You not making it about them. They want everything and everyone to make it about them. So narcissist Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury. And the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <coughs> Hear this, family. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. And he ordered some of his mighty men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach. And so I want you to get this picture, family. He ordered them to bind them and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. These men were bound. We're going to come back to that. Remember that, okay? These men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Get this, fam. Because the king's order to heat it up seven times was so urgent, the furnace overheated, and the flames of the fire killed the men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to throw them in. So I want you to see these three guys bound in their clothes, the mighty men who are throwing them, they're killed. Because it's so hot, they're instantly killed. So what happens? They're thrown into the furnace. These men are killed in front of the spectator's eyes. And then verse 24. Verse 24, I'm going to pause here for a moment and tell you something, family. There is a book called The Septuagint. How many of you have heard of the Septuagint? Okay. The Septuagint is the oldest and earliest Greek translation of our Old Testament Bible. Okay? 70 to 72 people back then got together and because the primary language of the children of Israel at this point was Greek. And so they're like, we need to translate our Hebrew scriptures into Greek. The Septuagint says something a teensy, teensy bit different here at verse 24. And it's a powerful OMG moment, family. So verse 24 says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. The Septuagint said that the king had these boys thrown into the fire, saw his mighty men eviscerated by the heat, he's sitting there waiting to hear screaming and agonizing. And what did he hear? The Septuagint records, family, that as he's waiting to hear the boys screaming in terror, he begins to hear them singing right. instead of yeah. screaming in horror. So he hears, someone said, wow. <laughs> he, he hears this singing. And the king was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, hey, 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 come here, come here. You guys, come here, come here. Be, be careful, it's hot. It's hot, come here, come here. Did, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? And they're like, yeah, king, 
Yeah, we did. Three minutes. That, that, that's true. He said, but no, you, you, you got to see this. Come here. Come over here. Look, at, look in here. I see four men unbound walking around in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt and there's something about that fourth man yeah. that fourth man has the appearance he doesn't look like the normal average man that fourth man has the appearance of the sons of God another translation yeah. says the son of God or the son of man right in the midst of the burning fiery furnace Jesus showed up family yeah. and and it's yes and it's so important. It's so important that you know. There are several times in the Old Testament where pre-incarnate Jesus shows up. And we're going to do a series on that, okay? Jesus shows up in the midst of something that was supposed to be their destruction. And something that was meant to be this horrible fiery death. Jesus showed up and the king said, wait, wait, wait. Weren't they bound? It's important that you know, family, that there are fiery situations that you go through in your life. And family, it is possible for you to go through that fiery situation and come out the other side more free than you've ever been in your entire life, fam. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid when you face those kinds of situations that seem like they're going to take me out because it's the perfect opportunity for our God to show up and to show out. Amen, yeah. fam. Unbound. Yeah. They went in just, but, and he was like, this fourth man, there's something different. There's a, he looks like, Nebi ran over to the door of the fiery furnace and he said, hey, 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 Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Servants yeah. of the Most High God. Someone had a little bit of a change of mind, right? Yeah. Servants. And so I don't want you to miss that because there are times when you go through fiery circumstances, family, where it's not all about you. It's so that someone else can be delivered yeah. watching you go through. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. yeah. Come on. Come out. Come out. I can't get any closer. Come out and come here. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego <laughs> came walking out of the fire. And all the government officials and the king's counselors gathered together. Are you ready? OMG, are you ready? And saw that the fire had not any power over the bodies of these men. The hair of the heads, of their heads, were not singed and their cloaks were not harmed and family, OMG, no smell of fire had come upon them. And so I want you to get the family, you know, how many of you wave your hand real big at me? How many of you like ca uh, camping? You, you like camping? You've been, I like, I, I do. I enjoy camping. I like going camping with some of my, some of my boys. Like I, I enjoy camping. My family, my wife and kids. They're not campers. They're not. And so, so some friends of ours years ago used to have what we called a hotel on wheels. I, it was a motor home, you guys, but I mean, this thing was gorgeous. And so they came up to us and they're like, hey, you know, anytime you and your family want to use our motor home, we'll take it wherever you want. So we took them up on that. And so I'm like, okay, this is going to be a wonderful family. My family enjoys glamping, not camping. <laughs> like they enjoyed that. They love that. My point is, family, you know anytime you're around a campfire, anytime you're out by your barbecue grill, and you can't be near fire and not smell like fire. So do you see this OMG moment, family, where even the men that took them to throw them into the furnace were killed by the heat? These guys walk out. The only thing that the heat destroyed was the things that were binding them. They come walking out and they have no evidence of ever having even been in the fire. OMG. What a mighty God we Hallelujah. serve. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so, Nebi <laughs> answered and said in verse 28, Blessed be the God 
of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel, his son, and delivered his servants who trusted in him and set aside the king's command. Just shut up and blend in. Just, don't you make waves at high, in high school. Just be, just do what everybody else does. Don't, don't you stand out at work. Don't you stand out at university. No, just be a college kid and do what all the other college kids do. Don't you stand out there in your neighborhood when everybody else is gossiping about this one. Oh yeah, and you know I heard about her. Let me, let me tell you about her. Yeah. When everybody else is compromising, just shut up and blend in. Just compromise. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow. And they refused to bend, family, to say, well, well, well this is okay. I know this is wrong, but if I just, a, a little, if I just bend, uh, they refused to bow, they refused to bend. And their faith in God he refused to burn. Yes. Their faith made them fireproof. And so what about us? It matters. It matters when we're going through the fire, Ted. It matters what we sound like. It matters like the people around us. Because people are watching. You know people are watching, right? You got, well, you know, I mean, everybody does it. No, not everybody right. does right. it. And how we deal with temptation and how we deal with that phone call from the doctor that says, yeah, it's diabetes. Yeah, it's MS. Yeah, your child does have cancer. Yeah. How we deal with, yeah, actually, we are going on strike. Yeah. Actually, you, your job is, is gone. It does matter. How we go through that. Unbelieving Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I love this family. He said, He sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies, even if it kills me. Even if, God forbid, I'm not popular. One of my greatest flaws through high school and college, you guys, I wanted everybody to like me. And so therefore, I was willing to be a chameleon and just, hey, I'm hanging out with the jocks. Yo, what's up? Yeah. I'm hanging out with the music people. I'm hanging out with, the, yeah, just whatever, whoever you want me to be, I'll just change for whatever the situation calls for. They were willing and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any God, small g, except their own God, capital G. Oh my God. And so what's this mean for you? Would you help me out, Michael? What's this mean for you today, fam? First, a challenge, okay? A challenge. What if suddenly in the United States, it was against the law to be a Christian? That this government decree went out. You worship God? You follow Jesus? We throw you in jail. We torture your family. We starve you to death. What if it was suddenly against the law to, to follow Christ? I'm asking you to not point the finger at anybody else, but you. Would there be enough evidence that you are a follower of Christ for them to file charges against you? If we were somehow able, able to take 
a, a, just a, a snapshot of your life for seven days, for seven days, and not here at church, because we're all Christians here at church, right? But, but, away, but away from here. For seven days, we were able to take a look into your life for 24 hours, for seven days. Would there be evidence that you know Jesus? Like by the way you speak to your kids or your spouse or maybe by the way you run your business or by the things you choose to partake in or not partake in. Would there be enough evidence after those seven days to say, you're under arrest. I'm telling you guys, she's a Christian. Well, how do you know? Like she just, she looks pretty cool to me. No, I saw, I'm telling you, she's reading the Bible and we thought we had all the Bibles. But she's reading. No, I'm telling you, he's a Christian. I'm telling you, he had the opportunity to completely rip these people off. And he didn't. Why wouldn't you take advantage if you could take advantage? Well, I'm telling you, there's evidence he's a Christian. Would there be enough evidence to arrest you, to file charges by the way you live your life? The second thing is an encouragement, family. And it's my last scripture for today. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he showed up for three Hebrew boys who were right in the midst of their most fiery trial, how much more will Jesus show up for you, family? How much more will he prove to you that he is faithful and he is worthy. And so whatever your fiery furnace might be, O King Nebuchadnezzar took note because he said they stayed faithful. They weren't the most popular. They didn't have the most money. They, were, they didn't have... But they made the Bible <laughs> because... They held on, even if it meant their life. And so whatever your fiery furnace might be today, maybe it is something physical. Maybe it is a health issue. Maybe you lay down at night and your mind is going 100 mile an hour because you're worried about your kids or worried about your parents or your extended family. Whatever it is, whatever your fiery furnace is Jesus, he promises that he's walking every step with you. You are never alone. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. There is nothing. Hear your pastor today. There is nothing that God won't bring you to that he won't see you through. Hey, Nothing. Nothing. Would you bow your head and close your eyes, fam? Oh my God. How amazing you are. How incredible you are. Thank you. Thank you for the Bible, that we have it, that we have it and we can read through it. And it's not that we always understand it, but that there's stories right there like this one that's like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, he's the same. And so he did this and yes, he parted the Red Sea and yes, he provided food for them. And yes, he, he healed the woman and he opened blinded eyes and he raised people from the dead. Yes, yes, yes. If he did it, then he's the same. He's the same. He'll do it for me. I have to stay faithful. I have to not give up. I'm not going to walk away even when it's, when I'm scared, even when I'm terrified. I don't know what's going to happen in this situation. I don't know. I trust you, Jesus, no matter what. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. We trust you. <laughs> if you'll keep your head bowed and your eyes closed, if you're here or you're watching and 
you haven't ever started a relationship with Jesus. Today's the perfect opportunity for you to invite him in to whatever situation you might be. Yeah, but pastor, I probably need to clean things up a bit before I, nope, nope, just come as you are. He's ready to take you and to make you new and to give you strength to endure. So I'm going to say a prayer. Would you say this prayer after me? This is you inviting Christ into your life today. Would you say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I ask you today to come into my life, take away my sin, take away the shame, make me a new creation. From now on, Jesus, I'm going to follow you in your name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand up with me today, fam? Fam, nudge your neighbor and say, O-M-J. Ah! <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. Amen, family. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. Listen, thank you so much for coming out today. Those of you, those of you who are able to stick around and, and kind of help get this, get this room ready for night to shine, we would so greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll see you next Sunday and bring someone with you, okay? God bless you.